for those of you who is the first time to uh, come across to this story. My name is Prophet Shepard Bushiri, a leader of the Enlightened Christian Gathering Church that is currently in more than 70 countries in the world. And according to our recent census, we have recorded about 7.8 million people who have registered online as members globally, and about 3.2 million people have registered as members in South Africa alone. I uh, went to South Africa in 2015, where, uh, among others, I, I have a ministry that I was um, running, and I'm still running until now, and also, I'm a businessman who do different businesses. And when I came to South Africa, our ministry grew rapidly. And uh, because of that, we have, where, where I can say, both positive um, side of it and, and negative side of it. Yeah, being a young black uh, person, having success um, has attracted different um, uh, attractions, and uh, some of them are positive and some of them are negative. But that's a story of another day. But uh, the main issue I want to address today is I am currently in Malawi. I came here uh, the night of Wednesday this week. And I came here for a few reasons. As we are all aware and that I have got um, uh, cases in South Africa that I have to answer, and as I promised, that I do not want to abscond from any trial in South Africa, and I will not, because it's a wish of every person to have uh, a fair trial and to have their innocence proved before courts. I believe in the law, and I'm a law-abiding citizen. Uh, but the events that have been happening in South Africa are so much uh, and called for, and, and I can call uh, um, uh, that I can say that there are a lot of injustices that have been happening um, in regards to, to my constitutional rights as a human being. As I said in the background of all the events, in 2017 uh, 18, I had a lot of problems with uh, some people who were coming to me in the name of. Uh, uh, law enforcement, uh, or let me say police officers, who were looking for, for money, to escort money from me. These people uh, gave me tough time to extort money from me, and I opened cases against them uh, with the IP department in 2018 in South Africa. IP department is a department that investigates corrupt police officers among other duties they have. In 2018, I also reported these people to the National Commission of Police. I reported this issue. Uh, after reporting to him, he referred me to the former Minister of Intelligence, uh, uh, Minister Bongo. He also referred me to uh, Minister Bongo. He called uh, the head of intelligence, uh, his name was Fraser at that time, to hear my case. Not only that, I am told that there was a General Matakata in, in South Africa who was informed of this issue. In 2018, when this thing was not being done, we went to the Inspector General of Intelligence as well to report this matter, that there are people who want money from me, and they're saying if I don't give them money, I will be arrested and I will create so many cases against me. When these things were not being addressed, I thought of coming to Malawi in 2018 to involve human rights groups. And the human rights groups in Malawi wrote uh, the South African um, uh, Rights Commission, uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, where they addressed them that the prophet in your country is going through a lot of injustices and threats. These threats um, continued to a level where by 2018 I had to, for the safety of my kids, send my kids back home to Malawi. And as I'm speaking to you, they've been here uh, since 2018. At that time, uh, one of my child was four years and one was six. But because of the threats I was getting from these people in exchange of money and all arrests, 
I had to send my kids to Malawi, uh, though they were very young. I had to send them to Malawi for safety reasons. As I've said, I informed a lot of uh, uh, agencies in, Malawi, in South Africa, including the National Commission, the minister, the uh, IPD department that opened the case against them. The human rights groups in Malawi wrote the South African Human Rights Commission, um, and the South African Human Rights Commission also wrote the judge president of the Hawks, informing him, uh, informing the office what I was going through. That is in 2018. Shockingly, in 2019, the same group of police officers I had opened cases against with IPID, they came to arrest me. Uh, I felt unfair and injustice because I opened, I had a case, I have a case against them, and them to have a case against me, I thought uh, they would excuse themselves from this case and have an independent group of investigating officers carry the case. But this did not happen. They arrested me and my wife uh, over buying a private jet. They claim it was money laundering. And uh, we were arrested for claims of money laundering. Uh, of course, though, uh, eventually, in the court indictment, there was no money laundering. They attached my private jet on money laundering issues, even though eventually they have removed the money laundering case in the court indictment. And I wonder why are they still holding my private jet if it was money laundering case that they were holding my private jet. Eventually, they changed the case to controversion uh, uh, of, of, of foreign, foreign exchange, which, according to me, uh, the things they, they claimed applies to someone who is a South African citizen. I did not buy a private jet as a South African citizen. I was a foreigner at that time and did not hold any permanent residence in South Africa. As such, the act they mentioned did not apply to me as a foreigner who bought a private jet. More uh, importantly, that I provided with the courts how I obtained the money and how I, I made the money. And um, having said that, these same police officers were still on me, and I had a lot of people coming to me to claim they've been sent by these five police officers, of which I have the evidences, and I uh, presented the evidences before, even to the judge president of the Hawks, I also presented uh, these evidences to say these people are making up cases against me I have the and all the ones. And I uh, presented the evidences before, even to the judge president of the Hawks, I also presented uh, these evidences to say these people are making up cases against me and all they want is vengeance because I opened cases against them. Um, I would, in, in, in a fair case, uh, I would uh, expect to have um, the, the people who I opened the cases against to excuse themselves. I'm not. Themselves but I believe handling. I am subjected to a fair uh, investigation that is illegal, not illegal. I, therefore, um, uh, when I saw that the same investigating police officers who I, I am subjected to a fair uh, investigation that is illegal, not illegal. I therefore, um, uh, when I saw that the same investigating police officers who I opened the cases against of extortion were still on my case, I uh, told my legal team to, uh, that I want uh, to be heard with uh, the, the uh, Constitutional Court of South Africa which we made applications to say, I have got rights that I need to preserve, I need to be heard by uh, the constitutional courts. Unfortunately, I wasn't given an opportunity to present myself before the courts. And, um, and uh, to make matters worse, um, these same police officers came to arrest me again. Why they arrested me again for the second time? is because I also opened a case against one individual and one company that um, came to our church and took a lot of money from different people and um, uh, defrauded our members in the church, and I had a problem against it. What I did, I called my partners to help the victims who were defrauded. 
I called lawyers to assist me in this issue, and they were assisting me over this issue. We even went forward to, to approach the National Prosecution Authority that uh, there are two groups of people that are defrauding our people. Uh, one company, and we even um, helped the uh, National Prosecution Authority with my lawyers to make affidavits how these people were defrauded. When I saw that, I involved my partners, as I've said, to raise money. Over 55 million rands was raised to help the victims. And I opened a case against the people who defrauded the members in the church. Shockingly, when these five same police officers arrested the, the person who defrauded us and also arrested me, and to make matters worse, arrested my wife too, for what reasons? Uh, nobody knows. Okay, I have got no problem with the arrest they, have, they did against us. But what was more shockingly is the life threats I began to go through while I was in South Africa. In February this year, I almost got shot in Santon at a filling station. I opened a curse um, in South Africa. There is a footage. Uh, I think it's in, right now the Santon police, they are aware of this case. They even have a footage where my life was at a risk. I almost got shot. And until today, nothing has been done. I feel my life is not safe in South Africa. So many times I've had attempts uh, of assassinations. I feel my life and my wife's life is not safe. I wouldn't want to die while my name is not cleared. This is the reason why I decided to come to Malawi after all the attempts I've mentioned, that I tried all those attempts to, to my power and my strength to be heard by all relevant authorities in South Africa, I was not ahead. And uh, this is why I'm in Malawi. I have arrived in Malawi, as I said, uh, Wednesday night, and I'm here right now in Malawi. Unfortunately, my, uh, our president in Malawi left for South Africa the day I had arrived the following morning, so I have not had any moment to discuss this issue with my government. We are thinking, um, um, well, we have made a decision on Monday to formally approach and communicate with the government of Malawi on the concerns I'm about to mention now, that the government of Malawi should help in um, uh, raising up these issues that I want to raise. As I've said, I arrived on Wednesday. I have not yet met any government official in Malawi. I haven't communicated um, to any government official. As I said, the, the president was, was away. And um, we are uh, communicating formally to the government of Malawi on Monday uh, on the following issues. One, I am in Malawi, not running away from any trial in South Africa. If I wanted to run away, I couldn't have come to Malawi, and I couldn't have announced that I'm in Malawi. Running away, you go in a country where you don't tell people where you are. Right now, I'm informing the whole world that I'm in Malawi, and I'm here in Malawi because I'm a citizen of this country. Therefore, I have come to seek for my government intervention over the following issues I'm going through in South Africa. One, that my, my safety in South Africa is not okay. I am uh, seeking my safety to be considered that the government of South Africa should assure me of my safety as I have said that my safety is not okay. I have opened a case um, where I'm, I'm looking forward to have uh, feedback from the government. Uh, whether the people have been arrested or anything has been done to the people who wanted to kill me in South Africa, in Santon until now, I'm not being communicated. I also feel, uh, as a second point, that there's a conflict of interest. I open the cases against these people who, all the times, are the ones who are arresting me. And I feel that there's injustice. I can't have a fair trial in such regard, in such cases, where uh, same people, I opened the cases prior to them arresting me, are the same people who are coming after me. One would wonder, in South Africa, are they the only police officers that the government of South Africa has? Can the South African government 
have a different independent group of police officers who can investigate independently, who have got no conflict of interest. These are issues that are really concerning me because I want, as any person, to have a fair trial. I've come to, to Malawi to lodge these concerns, and I hope to do that on Monday, that the Malawi government should intervene for my safety in South Africa. So I am partially temporarily in Malawi to lodge these uh, serious concerns to the government of Malawi that they should help me as their citizen, that they should talk with their fellow counterparts in South Africa and communicate these issues, more especially for my safety. I would not want to die while I have not cleared my name. I would want it's to the interest of every person to have a fair trial. And I hope I will not have a fair trial in South Africa. To make matters worse, one of the investigating officers uh, who is investigating me on immigration issues was arrested on corruption uh, cases. As I'm speaking right now, he's arrested and is part of the team of all the investigating officers investigating my case. This is to show you how much uh, my statement means to you when I'm telling you that there has been so much extortion issues uh, to get hold of me and I feel there's vengeance against me. This is why all these cases are being opened against me. So I'm calling for that the justice system of South Africa should look on these matters seriously. I've also instructed my lawyers uh, that on Monday they should make an urgent application in the courts of South Africa that my bail must uh, not be invoked, uh, revoked, as I've come here only to seek for intervention of the government of Malawi that they should consider these issues as they will lead to fair trial. To also uh, make a statement on that, I was under the, uh, the scrutiny of South African law authorities in South Africa, and on Monday I'll be subjecting myself as well to the Malawi uh, law enforcement. Whilst I'm here in Malawi, that I'm here, and in case of anything, I'm also, I'll be also subjecting myself to the law enforcement agencies here in Malawi as I'll be presenting my concerns to the government of Malawi that I am still under the law and I'm putting myself as well on Monday under the law. I'm not here to run away from trial. As I said, I would want to have this trial be done, but I don't think there will be fairness in this trial if these issues are not considered. Right, so uh, this reason why I want to address the general public that I'm in Malawi, I'm calling for fairness to my trial. I want the justice system of South Africa. I believe in the uh, law system of South Africa and the justice system of South Africa, and I believe that the justice system of South Africa can um, appoint an independent group of investigating officers who are not implicated because I opened the cases against them prior to them opening cases against, them, against me. And I think and feel I can't have a fair trial. Another thing, part of my concern that I want to raise, if uh, the South Africa justice system can also look at this matter because it's part of my concern, being a black person, being investigated by these five white police officers, having about three white prosecutors and having a white judge, I don't think I'm going to have a fair trial. I want this also to be looked upon, that there is a fair trial that we are going through. So I'm in Malawi right now not to abscond from any trial, and I'm not running away. I've not sold any property in South Africa. I have not exchanged any company. I have not transferred any money from any of my accounts out of the country. I have not changed anything. Everything remains as it is in South Africa. But I'm here to seek for my government intervention, of which I believe when I communicate to them officially on Monday, I believe they will intervene as their citizen to make sure that the South Africa government intervenes on these issues that I have a fair trial. With these words, I would also like to raise a point that I obtained a permanent residence in South Africa legally. I applied through the um, uh, 
the South African Embassy here in Malawi, which after four months I was told I qualified for the permanent resident. I got it legally and unfortunately to show you how desperate these five investigating officers uh, they, they, they can go. They are trying right now to push immigration to remove my uh, permanent residence. What does that tell you? It you are watching Prophetic Channel. They still want to revoke my my uh, uh, my PR, claiming I should do um, uh, representation before the Minister of Immigration, where I'm supposed to go and do representations. How I got my PR? Well, that's that's okay. I would do that, but how would I do representation to the minister who has already taken a side? We all heard the Minister of Immigration in South Africa making statements against me, xenophobic statements against me two weeks ago when I was arrested. So how would I make a representation before that minister? Is this justice? This is why I'm in Malawi currently to present my case to say can the government of Malawi not allow their, the, the citizen of, of the country or their citizens or other citizens not to go through such type of injustice. This is injustice, and I'm calling for Malawi government to intervene to make sure that I have got a fair trial in South Africa. This is why I'll be addressing and presenting myself before the justice system of, of also Malawi, before the law enforcement of Malawi on Monday, to say I'm here, I'm not running away, this is my address, I stay here in case they want me, but all I want is fairness in this trial. I am not running away, and I can't do that because i want to see justice in my trial with these words thank you so much for uh, um, uh, listening to my address i had to do this i had to come to malawi to make this address because as part of my bail conditions in south africa they said i should not comment anything i should not say anything what does that tell you i should not say anything i should not comment anything now is it, am i having my rights I shouldn't say anything. We have got hum, uh, human rights, and one of the rights is, you know, freedom to speech and expression. I can't express myself. I can't express my feeling over this case because they said I should not say anything as a bail condition. One of the bail conditions which is so and, 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 and greatly criticized judicially is that they said I must not directly or indirectly be... Uh, uh, in touch or communicate or talk to any state witness. Well, I have no problem with that, but who is that state witness? They never told me who is a state witness. Now, you tell me if I'm in South Africa, if I talk to my driver, do I know? Maybe he's a state witness. If I talk to my neighbor, do I know? Maybe he's a state witness. This is why I had to leave the country, because I don't know who is a state witness. Because one of the bail conditions, I must not talk to any state witness which is anonymous. Now, how would I live in the country? What about my pastors? Maybe they're state witnesses. What about my leaders? What about my church members? I talk to people. I'm a public figure. I talk to everyone else. I speak to everyone else. 
So for my safety, I am in Malawi right now, and these people, they have tortured my life, tormented my life. I informed all, as I said, law agencies in South Africa, all relevant authorities, and nothing has been done. So I'm back home to inform my government to look at it that I have a fair trial in South Africa. I hope my government will listen to my, to, to my formal communication and to me, as I'm not yet in touch with my government, they were away. When I arrived here, they were not in the country. I hope this communication is going to uh, uh, get into uh, uh, the knowledge of my government, and my government is going to take it up to make sure I have got a fair trial in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.